social lasting feminism, I mean, it's really about money. I don't think all the companies who are using women, strong women images in their commercials are concerned about women's rights and feminism. I think it's plain about making profit and money. On the other side, maybe for some women who never heard something about feminism or if they live in their old traditional ways with men working, the woman is at home, children, kitchen and stuff, maybe they get a little something out of it, maybe a spark of empowerment a little also. Um, but it's not very helpful to raise awareness for feminism. I think it would be better, for instance, in schools to teach the girls and the boys about feminism, about women's rights, actually about human rights, because it includes women's, women's rights. This would be a better idea to uh, make aware of the situation of the women worldwide, not only here in Germany, Europe, all over the place, all over the world, women are suppressed and killed for violence and abused. So, yeah, therefore, I think uh, commercializing feminism is not uh, very, not very useful. Okay, what's understood under feminism has, of course, changed in the past decades. I mean, we have uh, the term started in the 60s, 70s, and now there's often talk of post-feminism. Uh, one thing is that feminism, post-feminism has been commercialized in many ways, uh, and that I think that we need to be very aware of that and need to uh, not uh, fall into the trap that, oh, uh, you know, women are now, uh, as feminists, uh, uh, accepted in the media, and uh, that means, you know, things have really changed, because if we look, you know, what, what the situation of women is these days, it has not changed that much. A lot of things have changed. We have women in top positions. We have uh, we see black women in the media, we have uh, black women as doctors, as lawyers, and, uh, which was not thinkable in the, in the 1960s. And, uh, but on the other hand, we have just massive violence against women. Right now, during Corona, you know, there's you know, more and more it's becoming public how domestic violence has, has risen. And if we look at, you know, women in, in various regions in the world uh, who live in dire conditions. So there's just a lot to do and a kind of a, a post that could be understood under post-feminism too. What, what we need to do to keep feminism alive in its original, uh, with its original idea. Yeah, post-feminism is uh, not a word that I'm so familiar with. I mean, because that's things that are discussed now in the in the, the universities and among younger women. Um, but I understand that it is the situation that you are in now uh, as a younger generation that to find out what your goals are. And I would uh, suggest that it, this is a very important thing to make out one or two goals that you want to achieve and find out how to achieve them. In post-feminism, you have to find out what is our no, what is our uh, uh, grenze, our limit, yeah? Where, because you have so many freedoms that have been achieved, yeah? It's very easy to, 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 to lose the, the focus. Frauen werden nach wie vor unterdrückt, auch wenn, wenn vieles erreicht worden ist in den letzten Jahrzehnten, auf, äh, ohne Frage. Und die junge Generation muss auch nicht, nicht bei allem, sage ich mal, das Rad wieder neu erfinden. Aber wir müssen weiterhin aufpassen, dass 
dass das Thema auch, auch akut bleibt, dass es, dass es sichtbar wird, dass es transparent wird, dass es wichtig ist. Wenn, wenn wir es nicht, wenn wir nicht, wir es nicht tun, dann wird, wird es gegen uns verwendet werden. Und deshalb ist, lebt der Feminismus weiter. Kann sein.